Every archaeological discovery is a chance to get to know our ancestors better. Discoveries might tell us something new about what people living thousands of years ago believed in, where they went to work, or even what they ate. New archaeological discoveries are made all the time, and on this channel, we like to bring the best of them to you whenever and wherever they happen. Here are some recent highlights with a few outstanding paleontological discoveries included for good measure. If we asked you to think of an Australian animal, almost all of you would say kangaroo. The connection between the country and the animal is well known and well established, and it goes back thousands of years. In fact, as of February 2021, we can say with confidence that the oldest rock painting in Australia is a portrait of a kangaroo. The six-foot-tall mural has been found in a rock shelter in the Kimberley region and has been assessed as being 17,500 years old based on the ages of wasp shelters found above and below it. The rock shelter is close to the Drysdale River on the Ungongo clan estate and is officially the oldest known in-situ painting ever found anywhere in the nation. What's really exciting archaeologists is the fact that the style of the painting is similar to that seen in the cave paintings found on the islands of Southeast Asia, some of which are 40,000 years old. That suggests an incredibly ancient cultural connection between the locations, one which was previously unknown before the painting was found. The search is now on for further evidence of this possible link. Like much of Europe, France was once part of the Roman Empire. Back then, it was known as Gaul, and traces of its Roman occupation can still be found all over the country. In February 2021, archaeologists began excavating the remains of two ancient Roman houses in the city of Nimes, houses that appear to have belonged to extremely high-ranking Roman officers. The Romans knew Nimes as Colonia Namascus and occupied it around 2,050 years ago eventually turning it into an administrative center from which they governed the south of the country. There were around 60,000 people living here, enjoying facilities like gymnasiums, temples, amphitheaters, and a building that may even have been a circus. The two newly discovered domus contain entrance halls, central halls, atriums, bedrooms, large dining rooms, studies, and kitchens. One of them has a stunning marble floor with checkerboard decorations and underfloor heating. This would have been the peak of high society living 2,000 years ago. In fact, there are plenty of people living in Nimes today who don't enjoy this standard of luxury. The owners of the homes haven't been identified yet, but the archaeologists hope that identification may eventually be possible. It's a sad fact that not all of the animals that existed in ancient times have survived to the modern day. Extinction is an ongoing process and currently threatens many modern species. In some cases, we're able to identify an extinct species by finding its remains. But in other cases, we're reliant on ancient artwork. In February 2021, a researcher from the University of Queensland identified an extinct species of speckled goose in a 4,600-year-old Egyptian painting. Dr. Anthony Romilio says the bird, seen in a painting known as Mitum geese, differs from modern red-breasted geese because of the patterns on its breast and wings. The artwork is realistic, so there's no reason to believe that the artist applied artistic license when painting the goose. This appears to be a pictorial record of a type of goose that no longer exists in the world today and it would have been missed were it not for Dr. Romilio's sharp eye. Egyptian art has already been used to identify extinct species of donkey, gazelle, and antelope, as well as the auroch. And now we can add geese to that list. The Yanxi ruins in China have been known to archaeologists since their discovery in 1983. But it appears that the first archaeologist to investigate the site missed something rather important. To be more specific, they appear to have overlooked the oldest urban water system ever discovered in China. A team working at the site in January 2021 has identified the remains of a water system that dates back to the early Shang Dynasty some 3,600 years ago. Based on the evidence at the site, 
It appears that the water system was separated into two systems, an internal system and an external system. The primary use of the internal system was drainage, with the external system flowing out into two river courses and a moat. A connection between the two systems would have allowed for drainage, preventing Yanshi from becoming waterlogged while simultaneously feeding a water landscape for the city's enormous palace, covering over 10,000 square feet. As there would have been no template for these early hydraulic engineers, this has to be counted as one of the most impressive technical achievements of the era. There are very few places on Earth that didn't once play host to dinosaurs, which means you might never be far from a potential dino discovery if you keep your eyes peeled. In late 2020, Simon and Jessica Owens were out looking for shark teeth on the banks of the Stono River in South Carolina, USA. They found something a lot more special than that. This six-inch long tooth doesn't come from a shark, it belongs to a megalodon that lived and died 5 million years ago. The coastline of South Carolina would have been entirely submerged beneath the water back then, which would have made it the perfect hunting ground for the enormous creature. Just from looking at this single tooth, you can get an impression of how enormous a full-size megalodon must have been. Most estimates give them a length of more than 60 feet. The whole coast of South Carolina has proven to be a great place to go looking for dinosaur fossils, but the majority of significant finds are made by professionals. Simon and Jessica can consider themselves very lucky and now have their dinosaur tooth on display above their mantelpiece at home. England's capital city of London is one of the biggest and busiest modern cities in the world. It's difficult to imagine it without the offices, skyscrapers, and millions of people. Even if we were to go back in time 2,000 years, we'd find a thriving Roman city called Londinium, standing where London is now. But this was once a place full of wild animals. Evidence has been found in the city that proves that lions once prowled the land and hippos swam down the River Thames. The remains of elephants and hippos have been found during excavation work underneath Trafalgar Square, along with the fossilized skeletons of wild cats and wolves. It's thought that most of the exotic animals arrived between the two ice ages during a time when England was still connected by land to the rest of Europe. The country would have been much warmer back then, so it would have been a perfect habitat for the kind of animals you'd now be more likely to find in safari parks. The animals would have become trapped after the land connection to Europe disappeared, eventually leading to their disappearance as the temperature cooled. We know that the ancient Egyptians were very adept at preserving their dead by mummifying them. But until recently, we've not entirely been sure how they went about some of the more delicate tasks that the process demanded of them. That's changing thanks to the recent discovery of a medical instruction manual written on papyrus 3,500 years ago. This is the oldest mummification manuscript ever discovered. Mummification was considered a sacred ritual in the Egypt of the time, and so knowledge was reserved to a small number of individuals who mostly passed the secrets of the process on to their students orally. Written guides are so rare that this is only the third manual we've ever found. Among the new information that's been gleaned from the text is how to embalm the face of the deceased. The process involved cooking a blend of aromatic plants, applying them to linen cloth, and then applying it to the face and leaving it for days. This is consistent with what we already know about the process, which took a whole 68 days divided into four-day chunks. Yet again, the sophistication of the process underlines how advanced the Egyptians were when it came to their knowledge of the physical sciences. You might not have given much thought to the question of where the world's oldest pool of water is, but it has to exist somewhere, and the answer is Timmins, Ontario, Canada. The existence of the pool has only been known about since 2018, but it's thought to have been around for close to 2 billion years. You find it at the bottom of the Kid Creek Mine, which is the deepest base metal mine in the world. Scientists found a pool of 1.5 billion year old water in the mine in 2013, but this new discovery made it a depth of 2 miles below the surface 
has it beaten by around 500 million years. It's possible to date the water because of the concentration of gases within the liquid. As the water ages, it absorbs argon, helium, and xenon. The water is valuable to scientists for more reasons than just being old. They hope it might contain traces of ancient organisms, thus providing them an insight into life on Earth all that time ago. If the idea of 2 billion year old water has blown your mind, just consider the fact that around half the water on Earth came from interstellar ice and is older than the sun itself. The blockbuster 1990s movie Jurassic Park was based on the idea that dinosaurs could be brought back to life by using DNA from mosquitoes that drank the blood of the giant prehistoric lizards and then became trapped in amber. We're still not quite there in terms of real-world science, but we've recently found a 99-million-year-old tick trapped in amber with a belly full of dinosaur blood. Unfortunately, there's no dinosaur DNA left inside it, so we still can't open a real Jurassic Park, but it's a fascinating discovery nonetheless. The tick is so well-preserved that there are even traces of dinosaur feather attached to it. It might not allow us to recreate dinosaurs in a laboratory, but it does have the potential to give us new information about the way blood-sucking ticks have evolved on Earth. They've existed on our planet for hundreds of millions of years and appear to have been as much a pest to the dinosaurs as they are to animals and humans today. They might only be tiny, but they're survivors. We know very little about the ancient Etruscans. They lived on the Italian peninsula some 2,500 years ago before the rise of the Roman Empire, but we've never been able to translate their language, so their culture is a mystery to us. That's why Etruscan paintings are so important as a record of their civilization, and it's also why archaeologists got very excited when a new technique revealed previously invisible scenes in ancient Etruscan paintings in February 2021. The technique, known as multi-illumination hyperspectral extraction, involves taking multiple pictures of the paintings using every known band of light and then processing them through a computer using an algorithm. The process restores colors that are no longer visible to the naked eye because they've faded over time. That, in turn, allows detail to appear where there once was only a monochrome blur. A previously invisible human figure has now been identified in a painting known as the Tomb of the Monkey, and another painting has finally been identified as a depiction of the underworld complete with trees and water. These are only little steps along the way to getting to know the Etruscans better, but it's a start. Earlier on in this video, we talked about how far the territory of the Roman Empire spread across Europe at its peak. They didn't stop at Europe, though. They went much further. Here's some more evidence of the incredible reach of the once mighty empire. In January 2021, Russian divers plunged into the sea off the coast of Tartus in Syria and found the remains of an ancient Roman port city. The marine archaeologists, who belong to Sevastopol State University, took plenty of pictures of their find and also brought a few objects back to the shore including household tools and plenty of Greek and Roman amphorae. The major discoveries are still down there, though, including the remains of a first-century lighthouse. This port was formerly part of the island of Arvid, which was originally occupied by the Phoenicians approximately 3,500 years ago, but later sank below the waves for reasons unknown. While the lighthouse obviously can't be brought back to the surface, the archaeologists hope to be able to do more digging in the near future and retrieve something a little more interesting than the tools and ceramics they've managed to scoop up thus far. We know that many of the people watching this video will enjoy a beer or two and might even have a taste for rare and unique beers. But how far would you go to indulge that taste? Would you, for example, go as far as a team of scientists in Canada who found a 125-year-old beer at the bottom of Halifax Harbor last year, then opened it in January this year to taste it? The bottle of India Pale Ale was brewed at Alexander Keith's Nova Scotia Brewery, a company that still trades today, and was theoretically 
still fine to drink because the cork was still secure and watertight. The scientists decided to sample it in the name of research, and reviews were decidedly mixed. Some described it as acidic and bitter, with hints of cherry and oak, whereas others said it was disgusting with a strangely meaty taste. While none of the research team got sick from drinking the beer, they all agree that if you find a century-old bottle of beer at the bottom of a lake, stream, or harbor near you, it's probably not a great idea to drink. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.